of justice. Somebody's done that to me. And so for the past, I'd say, month now, we've been meeting with the Sonoma County Board of Supervisors. And we met yesterday with Supervisor Brown. And they're actually working with us to put a dispensary into place. We, we, had, we put in for another one, and we fulfilled every aspect of the ordinance, except for we were 47 feet away from a residential area. And it was just, there was plenty, of, there were plenty of barriers, everything, but they said they could, they blocked us because they didn't believe that the sheriff could see it from the street. But anyway, I guess what I'm trying to say is that if you could go on a case by case basis and look at each one individually, where they're located, what they're doing, how many clients they have, I have more than a thousand clients and we operate safely every day. Is that it? Yep. Okay. Um, try to run a business with only 20 people coming in a day. Thank you, Ms. Frank. Tom Davenport, followed by Aaron Vanderwalken. Hi, <clears throat> Tom Davenport from Redwood Valley. And I'd kind of like to follow through a little bit on what uh, Ms. Franks has been saying here, and, uh, and and I thank Chairman Wattenberger for bringing up this topic of 20 patients per day. Uh, what uh, I'm just speaking as an in individual to you here today, not as a steering committee member from the from the Mendocino Medical Marijuana Advisory Board. What I think would be a good move for the supervisors procedurally, I don't know how you do this. I, I don't want to see you vote this dispensary ordinance down, but I don't think that it's ready to be passed either, that the, that the process by which uh, it was it has come here today has involved a tremendous amount of work, and quite a bit of it is in the right direction, but it is, uh, it, it's a perfect example of a failure of the process by which this measure has come before the board, since it did not involve input from a, quite a lot of highly qualified people who could exchange across the table back and forth rather than I come up here and talk and then go sit down and, you know, that's not an exchange. <clears throat> so the 20 patients per day, that's just absurd. The idea of, of uh, no out-of-county patients, well, personally, I disagree with that, but others would have varying opinions. I'd like to see this go in, in with input from a citizen's advisory group uh, that represents all shades of, of opinion and knowledgeable parties as well and get worked on some more before it comes back. I think you got a good start here, but it's not ready. Thank you. Um, Tom, sir, um, you've been you've been very present at almost all of our meetings. Yes, and you understand that a lot of the wording in this ordinance came from other organizations. Uh, we had great exchange of information on the development of this. Uh, there was a lot I, of I don't. I, I'd have to disagree with the exchange part. I think we've had statements going back and forth but that we haven't had an exchange. But you don't recognize changes in the drafting yes, and the sir, wording I do. that responded to some of the comments? Uh, on a one at a time basis, there are changes that are getting implemented in here. And I would suggest that that the that the whole thing is still way overblown and that it as if it has a group of people that have some commitment to try and communicate with each other about what's realistic and what's not realistic. For instance, uh, our, our DA um, has on two occasions that I can recall said, uh, I'm not convinced that we have a need for a dispensary ordinance at the CJ meetings. Um, she doesn't seem to be here today, but maybe she's changed her mind. We've had a total in my recollection of seven medical marijuana dispensaries in this county ever. And so it doesn't seem like this is something that we necessarily have to be in a hurry to accomplish. It, it's a good thing if we can get it right. Thank you. Um, next speaker is Aaron Vanderwalken, followed by Terry Johnson. 
Aaron Vanderwerker, Reflections of Avalon. Uh, opened up a little over a month ago uh, here in town, actually out in the county limits. Um, I'd like to say that uh, from what I've seen already, 20, 20, visit, or 20 patients per day uh, really is not a realistic number. Um, how do you go about deciding who those 20 people are going to be uh, and how they're going to get access? It, in the ordinance, it, it uh, states that uh, you would like to see them buy a month's worth of medicine at a time to keep the visits down. Well, people aren't subsidized by their insurance companies for this medicine. So that, therefore, that doesn't make that possible. Um, it's not like going to Walmart and having a $5 prescription of uh, something uh, that, you know, that's covered by your insurance. This is coming out of their pocket, so it's, it's a little bit at a time. Uh, so therefore, that means multiple visits. Um, some people I see once a week coming in. So the, the 20 patients per day is, is just, once this gets going, it's not going to work. Um, second off, we do have a population of people that, that come from other areas to work here. Uh, so therefore, if they're not a legal resident, but they stay here for a few days at a time through the week, or maybe all week to work, uh, you're telling them that they can't be serviced uh, through the dispensary for their medical needs. So I'd like you to consider that, that we do have people from out of the area that are not residents that do need their medicine. Um, and. Uh, I guess uh, my last point would be that uh, these things can be run legitimate, legitimately, uh, ethically, and I would invite each and every one of you to come down and take a look at, at uh, how my, my place is set up. Uh, it's very safe, very secure. Uh, you can't, can't even uh, set foot on the property without being video recorded. Uh, the, the, the entire place is set up for the safety of my patients. and. Uh, everything in your ordinance uh, as far as setup has, has pretty much been adhered to. Uh, I, again, I invite you to come down and take a look around. To the board, any questions to Mr. Vanderwarken in, in regards to the operation or the development of his business? Okay. Um, um, just a question, Aaron. Um, did you build your business taking into account what's written here before us? Yes, I did. Okay. And uh, uh, any uh, comments I, from the sheriff's office in regards to fulfillment of this type of an ordinance? When I started setting up, we didn't have the full ordinance, but I, I've tried to modify everything I could uh, going along as, as your rules uh, came out. Um, aside from a little zoning deal that's going to hopefully be grandfathered, um, the rest of it is, is following uh, the ordinance to a T. Okay. The, uh, the sheriff's um, Captain Smallcomb has, has made his way through, uh, inspected everything, and uh, I, don't, I don't know how official it was, but he, he told me it looked good and he was very impressed. Thank you. Thank you, Aaron. Thank you. Terry Johnson, followed by Gregory Dean. I'm Terry Johnson. I'm an employee of Reflections of Avalon, but I'm here today as a private citizen. I am 56 years old and a survivor of colon cancer. I have chronic pain from two major abdominal surgeries that for that condition and the resulting complications. My husband is also a cancer survivor. He had lung cancer, for which he endured three surgeries at Stanford. These surgeries left him with debilitating nerve damage over the entire right half of his torso, pain that never lets up, pain that interferes with every aspect of his life. Our local oncologist, Dr. Hardy, encouraged the use of medical cannabis, stating our only concern with this use would be to make